Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and in this video I want to talk about potential changes to Mortal Kombat 11 I would like to see. So this video is very much inspired by a single tweet, and that tweet comes from Lord Ed Boon himself. So this is in response to Ultra David, but he does state here, would love an opportunity to hear more of your thoughts on this. We plan to continue adding to updating and overall improving on mk11 for a long time to come and your suggestions would be most appreciated now while this was in response directly to ultra david i do feel like this was kind of to the public at large as well and definitely a lot of people respond to that tweet and i feel hey myself yeah, I got some ideas. Uh, I've seen all sorts of ideas from all levels, from, you know, casual to competitive, all points in between. And so, hey, these are some things I would like to see for quality of life changes in Mortal Kombat 11. So the first change I would like to see is technically a removal of a feature, but to me, it's not a feature worth really having. And that is the Fatal Blow minigame. And I'm talking about when you basically mash on your button here and sometimes... During the Fatal Blow, you get a damage buff, and if you're on the defending end of things, you can also take a little bit of damage. And it really, really does not add anything to the game. Every time it happens to me, either if I'm doing the Fatal Blow or if I'm the one receiving the Fatal Blow, all it amounts to is just me mashing X on my uh, controller here over and over and over. Hope I get it. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Whatever, right? But... It adds nothing to the game, in my opinion, other than just like a bit of a mash fest. And more to the point, since the game doesn't document this feature at all, I'm sure someone watching this right now, you're learning of this feature right now for the first time, right? Uh, so if you don't know about the feature, you just get screwed over by the guy who does mash, right? Because you'll just get the extra damage and whatever, right? So uh, I understand this gives you something to do because some of the cinematics are more than a bit long. Uh, but that all said, I... It just doesn't add anything to the game, so I'd be for its removal, or at the very least, um, if you're in tournament mode or in ranked online mode, turn it off, you can leave it on in the other modes. Now, speaking of ranked modes here online, uh, the next change I would like to see is remove the rank decay. Um, so, if you're not aware, when you play ranked, if you don't play within 72 hours of your last game, you start losing points, you start losing rank. Uh, so for me, you no, know, uh, I only get to play every now and then on uh, for Combat League, right? Uh, it might be only one session a week, and if it's only one session a week, I'm guaranteed to lose points and just have to eat crap. That's all there is to it, right? Um, now, I understand the logic behind it. The logic being, you know, oh, we definitely want people to keep returning to the mode, you know, and not just like one and dunning and all that kind of stuff. Keep returning to the mode. Oh, my points are going to decay. So I got to come back, right? But then here's the flip. Someone like me. I like, I play, I play, I play. Okay, oh, I can only really do one big session of Combat League this week. That's it. And then I think, oh, I'm just going to lose my points anyways. And then all of a sudden I'm dissuaded from like maybe even trying at all to begin with, right? So you might get some return players because of this. But you're also scaring off people like me who uh, is able to play only sporadically sometimes in Combat League, right? Because I got so many other things on my table. Um, so I would just say get rid of it. It doesn't really add anything to the game to have point decay. And if you have to have point decay, which you shouldn't, just so you know, but you shouldn't. But if you have it, just make it a lot longer. Make it like a full week or something, not just 72 hours. And it used to be 48 hours. Uh, one of the patches a little bit ago changed it to 72, and 72 is still way too short in my opinion. So preferably just get rid of it. doesn't add anything to the game at all, especially because each combat league is only one month anyways. Uh, but if you got to have something like that, at least make it a full week, please. Also speaking of our fine online system... The netcode in Mortal Kombat 11 is amazing. I love it. It's one of the best netcodes in Modern Fighter out there. Good job, NetherRealm. Uh, however, uh, in stuff like casual matches here, we can decline matches uh, and we can see like the opponent's ping and all that kind of stuff, and that's fantastic. In Combat League, uh, once you hit a certain ping threshold, you are not allowed to, you know, ex not accept the match at all, right? And herein lies the problem in Wi-Fi. So a person can ping in on Wi-Fi at 50 ping. So therefore, I'm not allowed to, you know, cancel out of the match. I'm ha I have to accept the match in Combat League. And then all of a sudden, when we get into the game, that 50 ping turns into 500 because 
Wi-Fi isn't stable even at the best of situations, right? Uh, so uh, I really hope there could be a filter or something that you can only uh, set it like you only fight wired people or you can fight everybody, right? Um, because the fact that I, I know I'm going to get locked into someone with an unstable Wi-Fi connection, they pinged good for the one second they got pinged, but then we get into the match, it's going to be... A uh, complete crap show, basically, for lack of a more elegant term. So please, 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 some sort of filter, at least, uh, since you can delineate and uh, distinguish between Wi-Fi people and wired people, just go all the way, please, and save a lot of headaches for everybody. So one of the more plaguing issues of the game, and since the start, honestly, uh, and just more and more as we go on, is just how powerful jumps are. So a lot of people just can't deal with jumps some people have awesome buttons like cabal cabal has like one of the secret best anti-airs and is down three right but that's cabal that's not everyone a lot of people they have to rely on their uppercut and a lot of people's uppercuts in this game for the purposes of anti-airs are bad like straight up um because a lot of the issues is um when the person stands up to do their uppercut they stand up first before their active frame start, so they just become a giant standing tall target, and then they get kicked in the head, right? So, uh, for characters that have like really good anti airs, like you know, Cabal, we use the down three example, some people that have stand one anti air, that's all well and good, right? But that's not the majority of the cast. A lot of the cast, they just struggle against jumps. That's just how it is, right? So, uh, one thing, this has been brought up before a long time ago, and honestly, I think it's an elegant solution is. Just kind of go the Dragon Ball Fighters route. Um, Dragon Ball Fighters uh, down heavy is kind of the universal anti-air, and it has some invincibility against aerial attacks. So much the same way, give a down two, a little bit of upper body invincibility, specifically against jumping attacks. Uh, that way, if you are a character who stands way the tall up first before you actually try to hit somebody, you just don't get smoked. Now, this doesn't make down twos free to stop all jumps, right? Uh, if you do it too late, you still get smacked. If the move's too meaty, you still get smacked. All that kind of stuff, right? But on a bog standard, easy to read jump, something like that, right? You should be able to smack him out of the air, just like, you know, classic Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3, all that. Uppercats were one of the main things to go for. Um, and just kind of continue that trend. A basic uppercut should be a basic answer to a jump. And in this game, that's very character dependent. Some people have great uppercuts against jumps, like, say, a collector. And a lot of people, hey, they just don't. So I think that's a simple, elegant solution. It still makes jumps worthwhile. You know, you don't want to cripple jumps, right? But um, there are definitely haves and have-nots in this game when it comes to dealing with jumps. And I say, just as a quick fix here, make the uppercut a more universal answer makes everybody happy. Another thing I think would be good for the game at basically all levels of play, but especially for people just starting, uh, because this is one of the questions I feel the most, is people just don't know when to take their turn. Uh, online especially you get a lot of this just down one down one down one down one down one forever 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 right and people you know they can block it just fine right but the problem is it just happens all so quick and especially if you're unfamiliar in any way shape or form with the game or just you know fighting games in general say this is your first fighting game this stuff is gonna go over your head you're not gonna know how to deal with this stuff right um, especially because you can just kind of do it so quickly. Like, I'm block, like, the dummy set the blocking, right? And I can just smash and just one after another, right? So it's very unintuitive, especially for a new player, to know when it is time to take your turn after this, right? Because, hey, when I'm doing this with Kano, I'm negative five, right? So it's definitely, quote unquote, not my turn. But if you're newer, man, you're never going to know this. So the thing I would say is add more hit stop slash block stop to the game. Uh, hit stop is a very common thing in basically all fighting games where you do your move and as you see like when I do my jump kick the screen just kind of pauses for a split second. Uh, for things like down ones just make hit stop much more pronounced. So there is a much more visual clarity uh, to the defending player to know okay I blocked this jab here it is my turn to go after the down one right. Because uh, otherwise you know this is going to be a forever issue with newer players in this game. And unless you want to make all down ones at least negative seven or something, like, which you're not going to do, <laughs> it's not going to happen, right? Um, that's the only really other way out because I get questions to this day from newer players. Like, they don't know how to deal with this, right? And I think just having a lot more block stop 
slash hit stop every time the person defends against a down one would just be worlds better just for uh, people understanding, okay, I can visually assess. I saw the, you know, the move here. We stopped for a split second here. It's my turn. Let's go. All that kind of stuff. I think that would be good just for the overall health of the game and especially for uh, letting newer players understand what the hell is happening because otherwise it's just mash down one all day forever. So here's a easy one. This is one I've seen a lot of complaints of over time. Um, so I'm Jade right now because she's a chronic abuser of this and say I do uppercut. I'm negative nine, which technically would be punishable. You never know it because I just pushed her into the <laughs> next state here with this uh, uppercut, right? Uh, and in general, just uppercuts have way too much pushback on block. Uh, there's a lot of upsides to an uppercut, uh, especially, you know, in a scramble situation, get that crushing blow and all that. Uh, if you hit it awesome, whatever, and say no crushing blow, whatever, you reset the neutral, you got your big damage. And if it got blocked, well, oh well, I guess. Not really any downside to it, right? There's a lot of value to an uppercut in a lot of situations, especially in scramble situations. And there's basically no downside to it. Now, once again, as we went over earlier, I think uppercuts should be buffed in a way against anti-airs, you know, against jumps and all that. Sure, right? But in this kind of situation, the pushback doesn't need to be what it is, right? Um, I'm not saying, like, zero pushback, like, oh, uh, Devor could get, like, a jab combo punish or something on block, right? Not necessarily, but the enemy should be closer than where they currently are to you, so they can at least make advantage of the fact of the negative frames, and so they can try to take their turn versus, like, at this point, I can just walk backwards. There's literally nothing the other character can do about it. So I would just say decrease, but not like nullify, but decrease the pushback on block for uppercuts. So let's talk with the variations here. So the variation system is fine. It's whatever you got it right. Now we have three variations, which is excellent because we get to use a lot more of the moves, right? But we still got a lot of moves we're not ever going to be using unless they want to add fourth variations, right? So, a lot of these moves here, like Kano is a good example here. We got Biomagnetic Pull here, and we got Biomagnetic Trap. And uh, no matter which of the three tournament variations we got here, we're not getting those moves, right? Like, they're not there to be found, right? So, I'd say at this point, any moves that are not already in one of the official three tournament competitive variations, just roll them into the character. Um, a lot of characters, Kano especially, could use a little more depth. Like, I, I find Kano is a good example because... Uh, Kano, I find, honestly doesn't have the same depth as some of the better characters in this game, right? And part of the reason is, you know, his move list is less. Like, he's got less things to do. Um, and, you know, some of that's tied into the thing. Like, a lot of his strings, okay, uh, they're tied into the Ripper variation, right? Uh, if you don't have this variation, you don't get those strings. Um, so I would say, at the very least, the moves that aren't already in your third variations, just roll them into the character, make them base moves, right? Uh, if you've never played around with biomagnet uh, sorry, biomagnetic pull there, uh, it's actually a really cool move. You can do a lot of cool and fun stuff with it, right? Uh, so I would just say, you no, know, go for it. Like, take a risk. Um, you've obviously chosen in one way or another that, like, these moves aren't good enough to be in tournament variations anyways, right? Uh, so just screw it and just roll them into the base character. It'll give a lot more character uh, characters just across the board, more variety, more depth, and, hey, more fun. So that would be my suggestion. Any move that's not already in a tournament variation, just roll into the base move set. So something I've seen out of the competitive community, and this has been going on for a while, and I do agree, is there needs to be more solidifying of the archetypes in this game. Um, uh, fighting games, you know, they have archetypes, right? Like, here's my keep away guy, here's my rush down guy, here's my jack of all trades and want to keep mid screen kind of guy, right? And too many characters just kind of fall into that jack of all trades you know, I can kind of do a lot of things, but I don't really excel at anything. Like, uh, very few people I can put into hard archetypes. Like, Jackie. Jackie is definitely rush down pressure. Great, right? She's not going to zone you out or nothing. Uh, she's not really going to, like, footsie you from mid-screen or whatever. She wants to be in your face and pressure, pressure, pressure. And that's great, right? That's the character. Uh, but then we have uh, other people that just get send mixed messages. Like, hey, Sonya, in your face, pressure, 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 mix-ups. But I'm also one of the best zoners in the game. What? <laughs> You know, um, like the knobs got turned wrong on that one. And she's like a horrible chimera where she's excellent at two very different styles of gameplay at the same time. Right. 
Uh, this is not a jack of all trades kind of thing where she's just amazing at multiple things. And then, you know, we get characters like Garrus that can just do literally everything all the time, right? Um, so I feel for a lot of characters, uh, just to give them a bit more edge, like, you know, some characters that are very strong on footsies, like, double down on that. Make them terrifying at a mid range, right? Uh, make them super footsies characters. People want to rush down, make them more rush down heavy. People who want to zone, make them more zone heavy, right? But uh, a lot of characters are just a little bit of a hodgepodge of everything, and uh, except for the people who are the real standouts, a lot of them just don't stand out. So uh, I would say don't be afraid to get a little creative and put a hard edge on some character on certain aspects of their game plan. Don't be afraid to diversify up the roster, basically is what I'm trying to say. And the last one, I guess, is not even this spe specifically related to this game, right? It's just to NRS in general. Don't be afraid to engage with, you know, the consumer base more, the public more, you know? We like hearing from you guys. Uh, it doesn't always have to be, hey, here's today's media thing, here's the new DLC character, we'll talk about it like that, you know? I'd love to see more combat casts, you know? I'd love to see the more of the crew just shooting the shit every week, right? I'd love to see more tweets that are about stuff besides just, you know, here's a new DLC. Like, talk about, hey, where do you think the game's going? We're listening to this, that feedback. Oh, we heard your thing about, say, jumping too strong. We're going to look into it. That kind of stuff, right? Don't be afraid to talk to the public because we, we want to hear from you guys. So that's just another thing I got to say about that, I guess. So, yeah, that's just some ideas I have for the game in general. Uh, please post in the comments below, you know, some of your guys' ideas. And also, hey, bug them on Twitter. Bug them on all the social media spaces, right? They say they want info. Hey, give them info and feedback, right? And also, finally, just make Shao Kahn 434 special cancelable. Come on. How long has this game been out now and this move's not special cancelable? Just do it already. Anyways, my friends, that's it for this video. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much for watching. Hope this video found you well. Go out and play some Mortal Kombat.